when it comes to party politics and the nomination process and the green light but nobody's process, been kicked out so I'm assuming that that means you don't your party has not determined anyone to be guilty of what this report says this is the problem O'Connell you've talked yourself into a corner Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. If you've watched our, our two videos on uh, on the treason, um, you are up to date. Highly recommend them both if you, um, uh, if you haven't watched them. But um, now the MPs have been making their rounds on social, or sorry, mainstream media, and they've been asked some questions. So we haven't actually watched this, but we wanted to actually show you this and get a sense of what's going on. So let's get into this. In a statement, the RCMP says in part that it can, quote, confirm there are investigations into a broad range of foreign interference in Canada, including matters which intersect with democratic institutions. The RCMP, the statement goes on to say, though, will not provide comment whether there is an active criminal investigation into any parliamentarian. The report also states China and India are the most prominent perpetrators when it comes to foreign interference in this country. So should Canadians know who these parliamentarians are? Jennifer O'Connell is the parliamentary secretary to the public safety minister. Michael Chong is the conservative foreign affairs critic. And Alistair McGregor is the NDP's public safety critic. Hi, everybody. Good to have you here today. I appreciate you making the time. Uh, Ms. O'Connell, I'll, I'll start with you. Okay. I apologize for everything that's about to come out of Ms. O'Connell's mouth because she's... She's a terrible human being. Yeah, we've heard not very good things about her. We'll just say that. We've also seen not very good things about her when she opens her mouth in committee and on the floor of the House of Commons. Like, she's... I don't know why the Liberals allowed her to go on TV, <laughs> personally. I just don't know. But given that Michael Chong is there and he's one of the most respected conservatives, uh, if not MPs, in the House... She's probably going to be tame. Um, I wonder if Michael Chung is going to mention her boo-hoo comment. Um, but um, anyhow. Your government, as we said in the introduction, has said that it's up to the RCMP or, or law enforcement more generally to investigate and then pursue charges if, if it's warranted. But we heard from the director of CSIS this week who said because of the difficulty of presenting intelligence as evidence or turning it into that in a court of law, there are other avenues through which this should be pursued. For example, somebody can be determined not able to run uh, in a nomination or kicked out of caucus. Why is your government not even allowing for that? Well, in fact, we are allowing for party leaders to get security clearance and be able to read the full unredacted report, which will provide them with additional insight. But the same challenges around uh, intelligence to evidence also exist if there was to somehow be a list of names released without context and ensuring that any sort of intelligence is also corroborated. We think that the rule of law in this country and democracy relies on the fact that there needs to be that evidence, there needs to be that independent investigation. But we are allowing for leaders, and I believe the NDP leader, Jagmeet Singh, as well as Elizabeth May, the Green leader, have agreed to be have their security clearance continue and read the full but, report and they can make also uh, determinations if it impacts them. Sure. Okay, so there's something very important I want to make sure everybody is clear on. So if you are a MP that serves on the NSICOP committee um, or you receive this special security briefing to see the material that NSICOP receives if you divulge anything or act on anything that you see or hear, you can be thrown in jail. So if, theoretically, Pierre were to get this clearance that the Liberals are pressuring him to get, and then if, if one of the people on that list was to be conservative, and then if Pierre was to expel them from caucus... Well, Pierre could end up in jail. Right, because he was acting on intelligence provided to him. Right. Now... What that also means is if if you had that intelligence and you didn't receive that through NSICOP, you would not be bound by that same penalty. 
Right. So if, for example, this list of names was given to the uh, the public inquiry and Justice Ho passed it along to Pierre, and again, one of those people perhaps was found to be conservative, then Pierre could kick them out of caucus. Then Pierre could have them arrested. Then Pierre could take action. Well, the other the other thing to uh, that, that follows from that is if one of the other members of the Liberal cabinet were to release that or say that in the in the House of Commons, then it's fair game, right? So, this is the the issue um, that the Conservatives are, are are battling with. They're like, yeah, so what? Great, I can go in a room and they're going to tell me this. So what? Now I can't even basically even talk about it. Or act on it if somebody else gives me this information. Well, and this is how you know that Pierre is a man of integrity because he does not rule out the possibility that perhaps it is one of his guys. And if it is... He wants he to be able wa- to act Yeah, on he it. wants to be able to do something about it to protect Canada. So, and and this is a way for the, the Liberals and the NDP, but mainly the Liberals to be able to try and silence him. And you'll notice the block, they haven't received the briefing either for the exact same reason. So the leader of the block has said, no, I'm I'm not gonna do that. But if, you know, of course, Jagmeet is, you know, cause whatever. Um, But that's just something you need to um, keep in, in, at at the front of your mind as we go through these different weeks, because you're gonna hear LeBlanc and all the liberals constantly bring up this talking point why would the leader of the conservatives not want to you know no that's the, you know clearly he's doing this for partisan reasons no well and then they'll be like oh well jagmeet singh got this special clearance why can't pierre yeah because jagmeet's an idiot well jagmeet's only like leader over 24 other people plus i think jagmeet got it out of ego so he could say ah i have this information and nobody else does so Let's continue. So so my question, though, is about what your party and your government is doing. And I have questions for the opposition mm-hmm. about what their leaders are going to do in a moment. Your leader has read the unredacted report, does know who the MPs are. So far, Canadians have no evidence that your party or your government has pursued any other investigation about the possibility of for those MPs or those senators acting as foreign agents. Why not? Well, I wouldn't say that's accurate in the sense that, um, as the ministers confirm, the director of CSIS as well, is that this information is in the hands of law enforcement and it's shared there. And It's actually not. There's no confirmation of that. The RCMP won't confirm that. And not everything has been referred according to the Enzikov report. Owned in the face. (laughs) Look at the luck. She's like, oh, um, I guess I shouldn't. I wasn't allowed to say that. (laughs) I wonder, if, I wonder if O'Connell can go to jail for that. <laughs> Did she just reveal something confidential that she wasn't supposed to? Oops. <laughs> look at, look at me. She's literally, this is a freeze frame of her crapping her pants live on, on national television right now because I think she's like, oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah, you grabbed a pretty good freeze frame there, Cypher. <laughs> because, oh man, like, come on. Are you serious? Anyway, I love I love Vashi because she's she has no patience for 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 crap answers and 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 BS and she's so quick, right? You know she's so quick to pick it apart and just interrupt and say no no no, no that's not true, not true. Anyway, let's continue. But this is the point that if there is intelligence that has corroboration and leads to evidence, that there are mechanisms and there are laws in this country to deal with that. In addition to that, what my colleagues here and I, and I'd like to acknowledge the hard work that Mr. Chong and Mr. Um, McAllister sorry, Mr. McGregor, is uh, doing on the additional enhancements with C-70 to deal with the CSIS Act, which would actually give us more tools in information sharing in situations like this. So there is action being taken, but it's important to remember that intelligence is like a piece of puzzle, a piece of a puzzle and that it's the entire puzzle that forms the evidence and it's something that we have to stay focused on. You can tell Michael Chong is just chomping at the bit to kind of get his word in and start ripping apart what she's saying. Well, because not only is he the foreign affairs shadow minister, he's also experienced this personally. Right. And that's why it's great that he is the one that are, uh, is, is, is going on these panels because he's almost immune from any of the criticism that the liberals may actually throw at him. So 
the only criticism that the liberals can can use is against Pierre because Michael Chung has literally gone through this, has gone through the process of the liberals withholding this information for what two years that there were threats made against his family. It's outrageous and it's amazing that he has the composure not to try and strangle every single one of them. Well, just to be clear, the RCP actually prior to C70 and a whole lot of other things that your government could have or, or in, in the case of some of the advocates should have done, asked for legislative means to be more able to turn intelligence into evidence. That is not part of the new legislation that you introduced and the RCMP commissioner told me that one on one. As far as the bar that is required in order for your party to act at all on the possibility of foreign agents, why is it an evidentiary bar? Why is it that there has to be a conviction or the RCMP make that determination. The Prime Minister had no problem when it came to accusing India of being behind the murder of a Canadian citizen to rely simply on intelligence and say in the House of Commons that that... I'm sorry, I have to stop it there. <laughs> Michael Chung's like, yep, yep, thank you. Making my points, no problem. And 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 O'Connell, um, she, I, I agree, she looks nervous as all heck right now because she doesn't have any answers to this. It's funny because Jester kind of suggested to me behind the scenes that maybe O'Connell is there as punishment for her outburst in uh, in committee because she's like up against Vashi. <laughs> That's a really great observation, Jester. That's a really, really good observation. And you, you might be on to something here because why would, you know, you don't see any of the front benchers in front of Vashi on this issue right now. Yeah, and you don't really see them in front of Vashi too often. Right, it's only when they you know have to go in front of them uh, just, to, just to speak to something. So that's very interesting. But if you just look at O'Connell's body language, she does not look happy to be there. That's the case. I don't think anybody suggested that the party can't take measures um, when it comes to serious allegations. And Okay, that's a big problem that she's saying that now. Because she's saying, okay, well, we can, we just won't. That's a big, big boo-boo by Boo-Hoo McConnell. That's, that's going to be a problem for them. Yeah, that is going to be a problem. I don't think anybody suggested that it would require uh, criminal charges. You did. There are party mechanisms to do so. It's something that would have to be based, though, on corroborated evidence uh, and intelligence, and a determination can be made. But these pieces are also moving as more information becomes available. And I think that it is incumbent on everybody to take this seriously and to look at processes to put in place measures just, when there are serious allegations. Just very quickly before I move Thank on you. to your colleagues, am I to infer from that that your party has investigated this? That you, no. you have looked into the possibility of there being foreign agents and determined that there are not? Because I'm not clear. You, you at first did say it has to go to law enforcement. Now you're saying there's other mechanisms. Have you pursued any of them? No, what I said earlier was that to the calls to release names without caveats, without context, is something that in this country we rely on the rule of law. When it comes to party politics and the nomination process and the green light but nobody's process, been kicked out. So I'm I'm assuming that that means you don't your party has not determined anyone to be guilty of what this report says this is the problem o'connell you've talked yourself into a corner look at the look on her face she's just like oh, yeah, crap. Man. <laughs> insert beat parliamentary language or, or unparliamentary language here right here she's like oh crap screwed you are screwed she's boned and you've screwed the rest of your party on answering this because yeah, she totally screwed the pooch because if, if i were the, if i were pierre and i were everybody else i would be using this and said well o'connell said she said first she said well you know nobody suggested that parties couldn't take action and then so vast she's like okay so you guys have already investigated this well no we haven't well that's a problem too because they knew about this for two years so now you're saying wait a minute you've known for two years and the party hasn't done any investigating so clearly you guys don't take this uh, seriously but you, all you've been saying is that you take this. She has screwed their narrative right here. Like, set fire to it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Um, wow. I didn't think that someone could actually screw the liberals even more than Jibo. But we've found his match. And she's not even an activist that climbs the CN Tower. But she may end up in prison. Who knows? Clever.
very I don't think that's an accurate uh, assumption to make. And I think so what is what, accurate? Well, I think what's accurate is that those who have the security uh, clearance can review the information, can determine if there is another process or more work needs to be done. But making these hypothetical accusations of who is or isn't involved without context and corroboration of intelligence to evidence, I think becomes very problematic in that becoming the party process in this country. Okay. Guaranteed, Michael Chong is going to come back and say, yeah, but the report didn't say this was hypothetical. The report said this happened. Because that's exactly what the report said. There was no alleged. There was no reportedly. There was no maybe. There was no hypothetically. It was this is what happened. Okay, I'll, I'll circle back to that in a moment. I want to bring Mr. Chong into the conversation. Because you heard Ms. O'Connell talk about, uh, I think, what was referenced this week in testimony from both the NC NSIA, the National Security Advisor to the Prime Minister, and the head of CSIS both of whom essentially said just because your leader is briefed on this intelligence does not mean that he can't act. In fact, it means he could act on that information. You had thought last week when, when we did an interview then that that would not be the case. Why not get briefed? Why not? Why, why could Mr. Polyev now not just get that information and then act on it? Well, I think they're, they're not uh, correct in saying that. Here's why. What, what the Prime Minister is asking Mr. Polyev to do is to essentially tie his hands behind his back. Uh, and here's why. Uh, the Prime Minister is asking Mr. Polyev to go through the Treasury Board Secretariat's policy on government security. That's the same process that uh, other uh, individuals, on, for example, on ENSACOP have gone through. That process would require Mr. Polyev to sign an undertaking and to swear an oath of secrecy, not to divulge this information to anyone else and therefore not be able to tell anybody else to act on this information to, uh, you know, to, to, to hold individuals accountable. Uh, respectfully, though, respectfully, like, am well, I supposed but, to believe you over the director yes, of yes, the Yes, you are, because, because I think the director of CSIS and the RCMP may not be as knowledgeable about the processes under the Reform Act that govern party caucuses in the House of Commons and the other processes internal to parties that govern the conduct of their members and But maybe they're less the worried about those processes and have, an, have well, national uh, security law in well, mind just, instead. Uh, look, just to get into the details, uh, the leader has no authority to remove a member from caucus in the Conservative caucus. Under the Reform Act rules, that is up to the 120 or so elected members of Parliament on a secret ballot vote, and they're certainly not going to vote without information. Uh, the point, though, is this. But what if Mr. Polyev were to say, it's this person that I have learned has national security concerns? Nothing specific, just I'm very concerned about national security. You don't think that MPs in your party would understand what As that I means? understand the Treasury Board Secretariat's policy on government security, Mr. Polyev would not be able to divulge the identity of any of those individuals to anyone else, which is the same reason why the ENSACOP uh, committee is unable to divulge the, the names of the individuals. And so the Prime Minister is asking the leader of the Conservative Party to tie his hands behind his back, to, take, to sign an undertaking, to swear an oath of secrecy uh, that would prohibit him from acting on that information by instructing others or telling others what happened so that action could be taken. It's not a policy that the Prime Minister himself is subject to. So, um, Michael Chong actually doing a really good job of holding his ground um, to the scrutiny that Vashi is, is laying upon him. And I don't, I don't blame Vashi at all. She is doing what she's supposed to do. She's being devil's advocate. She's going after the narrative and she's trying to get answers. Why is Pierre not accepting the briefing? And this is actually really interesting to to have Michael Chong really stand his ground. And, and when she said, am I supposed to listen to you over the director? Yes, you are. <laughs> because they don't know what the governing rules for parliamentarians are better than the actual parliamentarians. And him actually bringing up the fact that Pierre would be sworn to something that the prime minister would not be. That's a little, that's, that's pretty that's sketchy. That's concerning because the job of the leader of the opposition and the opposition as a whole is to hold the government to account. And if he can't do that, if Pierre can't do that because, you know, he's tied his hands behind his back, as Michael Chong has said, then how is that good for Canadians? How can the leader of the opposition hold the government to account if his hands are tied behind his back? He it can't. It, effect, it effectively neuters the the official opposition in a really big way because Pierre is their strongest advocate 
right? Pierre is their strongest speaker. He's their secret weapon. Well, there's not so secret secret weapon. Um, so this is a really important point that's uh, actually being raised here. So it's a fascinating discussion to follow. Let's see what see what uh, Vashi says to Chong after this one. Uh, and that's why we're calling on the Prime Minister to publicly release the names of those parliamentarians who knowingly and wittingly assisted a foreign state to the detriment of Canada and its people. But they're the accused Prime Minister, of that. We th don't know that that's the same thing as it happened, as it happened no, for sure. They are and to the throw their names out there. Here I mean, comes. You're someone of treason. It's exactly what the Prime Minister did last September when he revealed classified inter information and your party about has another criticized him for foreign that. interference threat. Well, we didn't criticize... I get criticize, the point. I challenged Ms. O'Connell on the same point. We didn't criticize him. We didn't criticize... Uh, the government for releasing that information. We criticize the government for the way in which they handled the release of that information. That's yeah, the fine I point. I remember the criticism they, standing. Why make it public in this way without meeting a, yes, a, a specific that, bar? This that, is just that, intelligence. But that did not concern the conduct of a member of the House of Commons. And these allegations, this information, uh, concerns the conduct of several members of parliament in the last parliament and in the current parliament. And the threshold for being a member of parliament should not be that you committed a criminal offense uh, against the interests of the people of Canada. It should be a, a bar that says that you owe a duty to your constituents and to the people of Canada. And clearly that bar was violated when and members of the House conveyed confidential information to foreign intelligence officers and to Believe a foreign me, state. I think it's serious. That's yes. why I wanted to do this panel. I don't disagree with that anyway. Yeah. Mr. I'll, I'll get you in, in a second, uh, Mr. McGregor. But Oh, uh, I think I stopped it too soon. But uh, just on the, the point of whether or not, uh, like, I understand that you have a view of w what happens when Pierre Polyev is briefed. The accusation from the government is essentially he doesn't want to be briefed because he wants to make this political. Do you have, I mean, l l I'm just asking you to respond. I is it worth a conversation with Mr. Vigneault? Is it, is it worth a conversation with the NSIA to discuss why their interpretation is you can act and why yours is not? We have been anything but political or partisan on this issue. We have never raised the issue of the member for Don Valley North in Parliament uh, till the reports that have come out recently. We have never suggested that any other member of Parliament of any particular party is responsible for these foreign interference threat activities. The fact of the matter is this. The, pr the report itself, the ENSACOP report said that as far back as 2018, the Prime Minister was told about national security threats to Parliament and to our elections. He was told that the measures in place at the time were not sufficient to protect Parliament. He was told at the time that he needed to take additional actions to protect Parliament. In fact, the most senior civil servants, three times, went to him I for know. approval for an action plan to protect I, Parliament. He withheld that approval. And through I, all of this, he has failed I know, to act. I, but I've asked them a lot of questions about that. I'm just asking you, why not get a bet, more opinions, have a conversation to find out if you can get that info. If someone's in your caucus, don't you want to know? We want to know the names of the members of Parliament who colluded with foreign states to the detriment of Canada. We want those names public. We want them public now. And those people, regardless of the caucus of which, in which they sit, need to be held accountable. And that needs to happen now. We're, we're, calling, we're calling for the release of all those names. Okay, Mr. Rick I don't think I've seen Chong that fired up. And, um, you know, that's the thing. When Chong gets this animated... This isn't a show because he he actually gives a damn about Canada. He gives a damn about Parliament and he really takes his responsibilities as an MP seriously. Well, it's because he's been on the receiving end of foreign interference. Well, you know? I think that's just part of it um, like, because he, he was he was like this way before. Right. Um, but um, it, it makes me that much more confident that he is the shadow minister for uh, uh, for foreign affairs. You know, he, he this is the exact right guy for the job. Uh, and anyone that is in his riding, which is Wellington Halton Hills, you have a dynamite MP uh, if you're in his riding. Like, I would be so proud if I was a constituent in uh, in in that riding. Um, and uh, and he he went on a, a bit of a, a tirade there. But rightfully so. And, and it's basically like, like, are you kidding? Like, the prime minister knew about this stuff for all this time and did nothing. And, and you know, and Vashi 
coming back to the question, as she should. Well, so d does this does this not mean that you would want to know who in your caucus is 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 a problem? Well, this is the thing. Like if Pierre went through that process, he can't do anything about it. Like he cannot. So what? The, it's like it almost. I don't know what's worse. You have. Like, imagine if he did this, right? He gets the briefing, finds out one of his shadow ministers was, was one of the MPs. Let's just say that's a possibility. And then all of a sudden, Pierre <laughs> magically removes the, um, the shadow minister title from that person. You're now an MP. Gee, what do you think everyone is going to think? And in addition to that, Pierre could be charged and thrown in jail because he acted on that intelligence. This is the problem. Yeah, but the Liberals are content to just sit and let these various MPs who have been wittingly assisting foreign governments, they're just happy to let them sit in the House of Commons, in our House of Commons. Right. Because this is our democracy, folks. This belongs to Canadians. And the Liberals are just happy to let foreign-influenced MPs sit in it. I want to bring you into this because when Mr. Julian was sitting next to Mr. Chong a few days ago, he was not as certain. He actually was not saying that, that those names should be named. Uh, a few days later, your party released a statement saying we would like the government to find a way to release those names. Mm -hmm. What changed and why was that not your position initially? I would like to know the names. I, mean, I want to take this from the perspective of the Canadian people. Ultimately, they want to go through the next federal election with the confidence that when they are choosing a name on the ballot that that politician has not been compromised by a foreign principle. And um, look, I think this has got to be a very nuanced conversation and we have to rise above the partisan fray. Absolutely, I want to know the names. But I take issue with uh, Mr. Chong's assessment of the situation. Uh, my leader, Jagmeet Singh, no other federal leader has experienced Experienced foreign interference, the consequences of foreign interference like Jagmeet Singh has. It has affected his personal life. This is personal to him. Now, he has received top secret clearance briefings. He is going to receive further briefings in the future. That has not compromised his ability to ask tough questions in the House and take principled positions. So do I you do believe want if he were to find out someone was in the NDP, he could act on that information through those briefings? I believe there are avenues for leaders to act, absolutely. There's a way of doing this. And again, I, I, I asked the director of CSIS yesterday at committee whether it was in the interest of the intelligence community that a, a wide array of parliamentarians were briefed on this as, as possible, alluding to all leaders. He said, yes, it is in the interest of our de democratic system, of the intelligence community, to have as many parliamentarians up to speed on this as possible. Some way we are going to find a way that the Canadian public can have confidence so that when they cast a ballot, that that person is not compromised be, by foreign to intelligence. To be clear, are you saying that those names should be released publicly, or do you just want party leaders to find them? I would like uh, to find a way where we one day know their ideas identities, but I again have to respect the fact that our intelligence community may have issues with how that's done. If we can find a process where we take care of that, because I don't want to burn our intelligence sources, I want to respect the hard work that our men and women in CSIS and the RCMP are doing, so I want to find a way, but again, I don't yet have the answer because I don't have that top secret clearance. I just have time for one final question for you, and I was reading through that statement from Mr. Singh. You know, mm -hmm. it, it was clear that he found it incredibly egregious that mm -hmm. the Prime Minister has known about this, has known the names, has seen that intelligence since the end of March, and not acted on it. I have to ask you what I think a lot of Canadians will be thinking, which is, if you feel that's so egregious, why do you make sure he stays as Prime Minister? <laughs> yeah, that's the question, buddy. That's the question. And you because say, because our dear leader wants his pension. Pharmacare, <laughs> we've, we've done all of these great things, and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, because, you know, we're using our power to force this government and we're holding them account. Uh-huh. The NDP's turned itself into a joke party. Yeah. Like, they, they're they going to be the ones that you vote for when you want to throw away your vote. The non-democracy like parties. Like the rhino party. Yeah, it's the non-democracy <laughs> party is what it is.
Well, that's a great question. And I think, you know, we are at all times reviewing the agreement to see whether it's serving Canadians. But again, these issues are so fundamental to Canadian democracy. And if they're directly impacting our ability to have a fair election where everyone has confidence in it, I'm not sure now is the time for us to go into an election until we resolve these outstanding but issues. But, but that, I don't think that makes sense to Canadians. So you're okay to keep an agreement in place that keeps somebody at the helm of government whom you think could be allowing for foreign agents to remain in parliament. Like, how can you square that circle? <laughs> you know, props to Michael Chong, though, because uh, he's got a really good poker face. Yeah, he, he just makes these, uh, hmm, okay, okay. Yeah, he, he wasn't, you know, <laughs> sitting here with the sheet-eating grin on his face that we are. <laughs> My guess is inside, he was, like, laughing at this question, like, dude, you're, you're, you're in Boohoo McConnell land where, you know, you've backed the NDP into a corner here. Like, there's no good answer because of what he just said. Easily, because we, we're using multiple tools at our disposal, like... Let's walk through history here. Jagmeet Singh was the first leader who called forcefully for an inquiry. We got that done. He is a leader, unlike the leader of the Conservatives, who has received top secret a briefing. We have been pushing this government through all of the parliamentary tools at our disposal. But you're accusing them of doing nothing on this file. Absolutely. This, is, this could be people working on behalf of China and India. And it's adversary. valid. And there are important oversight committees and committee of parliamentarians that are doing that work at, at pulling these threads and trying to get to the truth of the matter. But you're I okay. Think if they remain in Parliament and the Prime Minister says Well, that's Minister. that's a, that's an open question as we go forward, but I think there are a lot of unanswered questions right now that we don't yet have the answers to and that I would like to pursue before we get to those critical points where we make these very consequential decisions. Okay, I'll leave it on that note. Wow, that was spicy. Here's the thing when it comes to uh, to this. The NDP, they, they are just a post hurdle. And... He had no answer. So, so okay, so you're you're fine. You're fine with parliamentarians just sitting there and the the Trudeau government doing nothing. Well, that remains an open question. Uh what? That is a terrible answer. A terrible answer to that question. And you know, it, I thought the NDP were sunk before. I I stand corrected everybody. This is a new level of depth when it comes to them sinking into the political abyss. They're going down to the sub-basement. <laughs> <laughs>